Welcome back guys. Now I'm back out here at my uh, little old honey hole between uh, Port, Port O'Connor and Port Lavaca. I know some of y'all guys have been asking where I've been going. That's the general area where I have been going. So um, kind of gives you an idea where I'm at. So um, today I'm gonna be fishing an incoming tide. I just missed, uh, just missed the minor feeding period. So hopefully, uh, hopefully the major will turn on pretty good. It's supposed to be around 9, 30, 10 o'clock. So hopefully I can find some fish. Now, I uh, got a west wind today. So I'm probably gonna have to be fishing a different type of sh uh, shoreline than I did last time. So um, hopefully I can find some fish. I'm out here by myself again. You know, it's on a Friday, day before 4th of July. You know, there's a lot of people on the water. I actually got ran off the road on the way here. You know, a guy was riding my tail with a light bar on and I just, you know, he was driving very, very fast. So I just moved out of the way for him. So when y'all guys fish these holiday weekends, y'all need to stay safe out there, not just on the water, but getting to your spots as well. But y'all stay with me guys. Hopefully we can get in some fish and uh, we'll see what happens. Oh yeah, 14, four, a little over 14 and a half. Got my lunch. 
good little morning start like that. It ain't even seven o'clock and got one fish in the box ready, man. It's nice. To start out like that. That's that's working all over in here. Keep seeing some blow-ups up there. I seen a fish blow up on the shoreline. Threw up here. I didn't want to get this close, wasn't sure if I was gonna blow them out of here, but they're here. The keeper. Flounder, man, that's another one. You know, I thought they were redfish blowing up, but then I started noticing they were they were kind of you know I could see the white belly on them and kind of figured that's what it was after I started thinking about it and I was like, man, that's got to be flounder. And sure enough, it's what it is. They're right up against the shoreline, man. They're like hugging it really, really close. See, I, I let this one eat it. I don't know if y'all can see that, that, that uh, paddle tail way down in there. Hooked them right in the roof of the mouth, right in here, so. But it's a ton of bait in here and there's jumping everywhere. Here he is. About the same thing, 14, a little over 14 and a half. So he's gonna keep, man. But these flounder have been eating a bunch. Look how fat they are for even this small. Pretty good. Pretty dang good. And get him in the in the box. Once again, my mother-in-law is gonna love me. She loves these flounder. Let's get into the bottom. Hey, see what I do, guys? Is I put my fish in here. Yeah, I'll, I'll keep water in here too, but I keep every all my food on top in a bag. Make sure everything's closed, and I just put all my fish on the bottom, and then keep my water on top. Not that it's gonna matter. I mean, unless you don't want to drink out of a bottle of water that smells like fish, but I have no problem doing that when I'm catching fish, believe me. Stay hydrated out here, you know. If you're catching fish, yeah, it smells like fish, but you know, it beats, uh, beats passing out out here, especially if you're by yourself, like I, I am a bunch. So, man, guys, that was a, that brought my confidence up for the day a little bit better. Now that I'm realizing what they were, I might hug that shoreline a little closer and just work it real slow. Every now and then, what looks like a redfish boil is what I think it is, but I think there's just, there's some good flounder in here. Just stacked in here again for some reason. But let's go see what happens. Biggest flounder I've ever caught in my life. This is the biggest flounder I have ever caught. I'm telling you guys, this sucker's a stud. Flat out stud.
he freaking choked it too. I might, I might be able to get it out though. Look at that sucker guys. Wow. <laughs> wow. Nineteen inches. It's freaking huge. Definitely my biggest flounder I've ever caught. Personal best. <laughs> One more time guys, look at that. Wow. Just a flat freaking doormat, man. Look at that guy. Wow. I can't believe that. <laughs> that thing was a giant, guys. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go catch another one. And I mean a flat out giant. Tell you what guys, if you don't own a pair of forceps, I highly recommend to get some. Especially when some of them fish are hooked deep. You don't want to kill them if you're going to be releasing them. 90% of the time, I can get that jig head and lure out of there. Let's go try it again, man. That thing, that sucker was a tank. That was a tank. Pick up the old power pole. I just need to get me one of them nice ones. Maybe I'll ask Santa Claus for one. All right, guys, let's get after it again. Got another good one. Looks like they're getting bigger. So all I'm doing guys is just drifting this whole freaking little canal in here. And I'm telling you, they're just they're stacked in here again for some reason. I don't know. A ton of bait is, is here too, like it was last time, but I did not think they'd be in here like this again. Yeah, he's still a little green, but I didn't want to take a chance on losing him. We didn't know how good he was hooked, but but watch this guy. See that lure way down in there? These freaking flounder got some gnarly ass teeth. Gnarly, gnarly teeth. That hook came right out, but look at this. See these teeth here? You can stick these forceps, eight inch, I think they're eight inch forceps, all the way down into here to pull them right out never have a problem getting them out especially with these flounder man they got some crazy teeth and you don't want to be sticking your fingers in there at least i wouldn't but let's get a measurement on this guy 
This one's 17 inches. 17 inches. Let's get him in the box too. Mess of flounder in there, guys. Mess of them. Well, that's flounder number four. Let's see if we can go get one more and maybe start chasing some redfish. It's kind of what I was intention, intentionally gonna try to catch was some redfish, but I'll, I'll be happy with them flounder. That's all I'm doing guys is eight ounce jig head with a white ice, the small, uh, not the burner shed, but the, the regular size model of uh, the uh, down south lure and the white ice. And I mean, it's holding up pretty good. I probably can catch one more fish on it before I change it out. Just working right up along all this grass. You feel that thump, just wait. You know, I think I was setting the hook a little too early earlier and I lost three of them right at the kayak. So, let's go see if we can get us at least a limit. We got a little bit more left of the shoreline to, to go. I mean, I can go back and drift the other side if I want to. So, I just gotta have to pedal back up, let the wind push me back. That's all I'm doing is fishing right in this flooded little cast right up against this little flooded, uh, flooded grass letting the wind just letting the wind push me and all I'm doing is just controlling my rudder you know to keep me straight parallel with it so it's all I'm doing as soon as I hook into one or I feel that tap or a thud like that there oh now he let it go um I just uh I wait a couple seconds, 10, 5, 10 seconds, maybe not that long, but it feels like it's a long time, and set the hook, and what I've noticed is these bigger ones have, they've just flat out choked it down there. I mean, they've, they're inhaling them, so that's all I'm doing, guys. It's not, you find you a shoreline like this with bait gotta have bait you don't have you don't see any bait there's a bite oh man it's another good one. Oh yeah <laughs> there you have it guys that's a limit there that's a limit So like I said, I'm just working this whole little canal in here, whatever it is. And it's about, in the middle, it's about almost two foot, about, almost two, about 20 inches deep. And then right along these sides, I have to kind of flutter, but I'm letting the wind push me and I'm just working this shoreline right up against all that grass is all I'm doing. So, see he inhaled this one as well. So oh, remember the scissors, you don't want them. See these forceps? Watch these things, man. I love these things. I didn't think I was gonna like them when I bought my, when I bought my wading box from Stinky Pants Fishing. 
I'll leave a link in the to these forceps as well. And uh, you don't want to get your hands in here. See, you can lock them. Reach down in there and pull it out. And then to unlock, you just push down and apart, lock them back up, put them back where you store them, and they work great. They work really good. Get the bubble grip on them. man downside is these things got they got some fight in them you boat them while they're still real green i like to boat them anyway just because you know most of the time they will spit that hook if you don't have a good hook set on them so i don't mind getting beat up but just just a fair warning 16 and a quarter so that's a, another keeper that's a limited flounder guys got two 14 and a half and then that one big one 19 and then a 17 and now this one so we're gonna do one double check count do a count on them make sure we're not over if we're over we're gonna let this guy go he's got plenty of life left in him take the lunch out water out take this bag of ice out all right so there's four there and there's five that's a limit guys so this reliable bag I uh I have put a link in it in my other videos before this one. Man, this is, I got two 10 pound bags of ice in here. I keep my food on top. Some guys wouldn't do that. I don't care, but it keeps your catch fresh, guys. I mean, unless you're fishing a tournament and you're gonna be weighing in live redfish, this thing is <coughs> this thing is the way to go by far the way to go get everything back to organize the way it was and let's go find us some redfish what i'll probably do is just continue drifting this shoreline here like i've been doing i'm gonna change this bait out and just to catch some you know Maybe, who knows I might catch and release my, my personal best so and then see if we can go find some redfish or even trout I know there's a little bit of shell on one end of the little area I'm fishing here and uh, hopefully hopefully we can find some other other fish see what happens guys stay with me guys hell yeah oh, man I was waiting for him I came and worked this shoreline I've never worked before and man I just been casting and casting I seen some boils and a bunch of boils made cast and cast and nothing and finally I got into this one picked it up and he didn't even really hit it he just you know, I mean, he's barely hooked, as y'all can see. Look, but 
that little light action rod man it makes makes for a fun fight see there there they are leaving Not a bad fish though. Four and a quarter. Get a measurement on them real quick. Twenty-two. Two twenty-one and three quarter. Not a bad fish, guys. Let's get him in the box and fixing to eat me some lunch I'm getting a little hungry there he is guys almost 22 